Folks, Folks, Donald Trump's big election lie is based upon the turnout of black people. You might remember there were four states that he kept targeting. He was talking about Fulton County, Atlanta in Georgia, Philadelphia in Pennsylvania, Milwaukee in Wisconsin, Detroit in Michigan. That's who Donald Trump kept targeting. He kept focusing. He was focusing on black people. Him and his supporters put the names and information out of two black women, suggesting they somehow were rigging the election. Those women, Shea and Ruby Moss, both testified today before the January 6th Select Committee. And folks, their testimony was shocking. It was harrowing. They described how Trump and his team has made their lives a living hell. Well, they literally don't even want their names caught out loud out of fear that they are going to be targeted. We're going to show you some of that testimony today. And trust me, when you hear this, you will understand why black people, we knew that Donald Trump had no business being in the Oval Office. Hashtag, we tried to tell you. And had America listened to black people, these black women would not have had to endure what they did in the wake of the 2020 election. Here is some of their testimony. Ms. Moss, how has this experience of being targeted by the former president and his allies affected your life? It's turned my life upside down. Um, I no longer give out my business card. I don't transfer calls. I um, don't want anyone knowing my name. I don't want to go anywhere with my mom because she might yell my name out over the grocery aisle or something. I don't go to the grocery store at all. I haven't been anywhere um, at all. I've gained about 60 pounds. I just don't do nothing anymore. I don't want to go anywhere. I second guess everything that I do. Um, it's affecting my life in a, in a major way, in every way, all because of lies. For me doing my job, same thing I've been doing forever. Your mother also told the select committee about how she had to leave her own home for her safety and go into hiding after the FBI told her that it would not be safe for her there before January 6th and until the inauguration. Let's listen to a clip of her story in her own words. Around the week of January 6th, the FBI informed me that I needed to leave my home for safety. Um, And I left my home for safety around that time. Understood. How, how long did you stay out? Did you, you know, remain outside of your home for your own safety? I, I stayed away from my home for approximately two months. It was horrible. I felt homeless. I felt, you know, I can't believe, I can't believe this person has caused this much damage to me and my family um, to have to leave my home that I've lived there for 21 years. And, you know, I'm having to have my neighbors watch out for me, you know, um, and I have to go and stay with somebody. It was hard, it was horrible. And that um, your conversation with the FBI about needing to leave your home for your, your own safety or perhaps recommending it, um, do you remember, was there a specific threat that prompted that, or was it the accumulation of, of threats that you had received? What prompted it was, um, was getting ready to January 6th was about to come, and they did not want me to be at home because of all the threats and everything that I had gotten. They didn't want me to be there in fear of, you know, the people would come into my home and, 
I had a lot of that, so they didn't want me to be there just in case something happened. I asked, how long am I going to have to be at home? They said, at least until the inauguration. Ms. Moss, I understand that people once uh, showed up at your grandmother's house. Uh, tell us about that experience. Um, I received a call from my grandmother. This woman is my everything. I've never even heard her or seen her cry ever in my life. And um, she called me screaming at the top of her lungs like, Shay, Shay, oh my God, Shay, just freaking me out, saying that um, there were people at her home and they, um, you know, they knocked on the door and of course she opened it and seeing who was there, who it was, and they just started pushing their way through, claiming that they were coming in to make a citizen's arrest they needed to find me and my mom. They knew we were there. Um, and she was just like, screaming and, and didn't know what to do. And I wasn't there. So, you know, I just felt so helpless and so horrible for her. And she um, was just screaming. I told her to close the door. Don't open the door for, for anyone. And... Um, no, she's a 70-something, I won't say, year old woman, and she she doesn't like having restrictions. She wants to answer the door. She likes to get her steps in, walking around the neighborhood, and I had to tell her, like, you can't do that. You, you have to be safe. Um, you know, she would tell me that at night, um, people would just continuously send pizzas over and over to her home, um, you know, and they were expecting her to pay for these large amounts of pizzas, and, and she went through a lot that she didn't um, have to, and once again, it, it made me just feel so horrible. Folks, that is utterly shameful as a result of Donald Trump and his minions, what they did to these sisters. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. How about sushi? I just had sushi for lunch yesterday. Yeah. How about tacos? Automatic emergency braking, one of six advanced safety features standard on every 2022 Chevy Equinox. Find new technology, find new roads, Chevrolet. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real um, revolutionary right now. Like, wow. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. Hey, I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black Owned Media and something like CNN. You can't be Black Owned Media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? 